Okay, let's take a look at these questions then. This question says that one, in economics, the demand for a good refers to the amount of the good that people A, will buy at alternative income levels, B, need to achieve a minimum standard of living, C, will buy at various prices, or D, will like to have the good were free. And so when we uh, look at uh, demand for a good, uh, we're looking at the demand curve and the law of demand, and it's basically telling us at every single price level, how much do people want to buy overall? And so that's going to be best matched by uh, answer choice C, right? In economics, the demand for a good refers to the amount of the good that people will buy at various prices. Um, none of the other answer choices seem to really depict the relationship we see uh, presented to us on the demand curve. And so we're going to go with C. And so we can check the correct answer, and the previous theater also said C, which is great. Two says, the term ceteris paribus means that a, what is for the individual is not necessarily true for the whole. B, all variables except those specified are constant. C, everything is variable. D, no one knows which variable will change and which will remain constant. So this seems to be a really definition-based question. Setters previous, I believe it's Latin. Um, I'm not exactly sure, don't quote me on that. But um, it is a term that you'll often hear in economics, and it is basically used to say holding all else equal, right? And so it, it, the reason we make this assumption that we want to hold everything else equal is so that we can try and isolate what are the uh, causal factors for different things that are shifting in our economic models. And so um, holding all else equal is typically what we think of, and that seems to be best uh, matched by answer choice B. Uh, the term setters previous means that all variables except those specified are constant. And that seems to uh, best uh, depict that definition. And so let's take a look at the correct answer choice, uh, or the answer choice the previous tutor picked. And they picked B as well, which is great. Okay, let's move on to question number three. Question number three says, when economists talk about supply, they are referring to a relationship between price received for each unit sold and the A. Quantity supplied, B, demand schedule, C, demand curve, or D, market price. And so, again, looking at the supply curve, we see on the x-axis we have quantity uh, supplied, and on the y-axis we have units sold. Sorry, price, of, uh, price, at, uh, price level in the economy. And so the supply curve is it depicting the relationship between those two things. So the question gives us price already, and then the other thing that is related to that price on the supply curve is going to be quantity supplied. And so A is going to be the right answer for this question. Let's take a look at what the previous tutor said. Previous tutor said A as well, which is great. We can move on to question four. Question four says, but nearly all supply curves share a basic similarity. They slope blank. A, up from left to right. B, down from left to right. C, up from right to left. D, down from right to left. And so, uh, what we're looking at here is the supply curve. We have price and quantity, and we know that supply curves typically look like this. It's an upward sloping line, right? So which one of these best describes this shape? A says up from left to right, and that seems to be uh, true. Uh, and so, I mean, the thing that confuses me is like, you could also say it's down from right to left, right? It's starts high on the right side and goes down on the left side. I'm going to still go with A up from left to right only because we typically read the graph that way and uh, that's the best way to understand it and we typically think upward sloping or positive slope when we think supply curve. We don't think downward sloping from the left, I'm uh, sorry, from the right, right? So uh, A is going to be the best answer here for me. And so let's take a look what the previous tutor said. So the previous tutor said B and they say quantity is negatively related to price. So I think they might have confused this with the demand curve. For suppliers, quantity is positively related to price. The more money that suppliers can sell their goods for on the market, the more they're going to be willing to supply, right? Not less. And so it's going to be A for question four, but it's the correct answer. So I'll leave it for A. For suppliers, quantity supplied is positively correlated with price. Okay, so let's take a look at the... Next question, question five. 
The nature of demand indicates that as the price of a good increases, A, suppliers wish to sell less of it, B, buyers decide to purchase less of it, C, more of it is desired, or D, more of it is produced. And so this is again looking at uh, the demand curve, uh, looking at uh, what is going on with the law of demand. And so we can draw this out one more time. All right, this is that graph. We have our price, we have quantity, we have our downward sloping demand curve. And so there's a negative relationship between price and quantity supplied. And so as the price of a good is going up, so you're going uh, from, let's say, this point to this point, you see the price is going up. And uh, what happens? Uh, to the quantity that people are buying. And the quantity purchased is gonna go down. You used to have uh, purchasing of this quantity, now it falls to this quantity. And so as price goes up, quantity demand goes down. That is in fact what the law of demand tells us. And so the correct answer here is probably gonna be answer choice B, right? The nature of demand indicates that as the price of a good increases, buyers desire to purchase less of it. Uh, and so that, none of the other answer choices are going to um, come close to what we're looking for. And so B is going to be the right answer for this question. And we can take a look at the previous year's answer. So for five, uh, they also chose B due to an inverse relationship between price and demand. So that's great. We can move on to question six. Any given demand or supply curve is based on the setter's previous assumption that A, everything is variable, B, all else is held equal, C, no one knows which variable will change and which will remain constant, or D, what is true for the individual is not necessarily true for the whole. And so, uh, again, this is very similar to what we were looking at in the previous question for what does ceteris previous mean? And again, we said that ceteris previous refers to holding all else equal. And that is gonna be, you know, this is a very simple definition question, that's something you're gonna have to remember. And B is gonna be the correct answer here for this question. Any given demand or supply curve is based on the ceteris previous assumption that all else is held equal. Pretty straightforward. And so you can take a look at question six. And again, uh, the proof here also says B, all else is held equal, like for price and demand, relationship, income, tastes, preferences are held constant. Yeah, so that's good. Let's move on to question seven. Economists refer to a relationship that a higher price leads to a lower quantity demanded as the A, price model, B, law of demand, C, market equilibrium, or D, income gap. And again, what we're looking at here is going to be, uh, you know, something uh, fundamental to um, economics. The relationship, inverse relationship between quantity demanded and, and price is referred to as the law of demand, which tells us that relationship. And so uh, B is going to be the best answer here. The economists refer to relationship that a higher price leads to lower quantity demanded as the law of demand. And we can check the previous tutor's answer, and they're also saying the law of demand specifies the negative relationship between quantity and price. Great. Let's move on to question eight. A perfectly elastic supply curve is which one of the following? A, vertical, B, downward sloping to the left, C, horizontal, D, upward sloping to the right. And so uh, what we're looking at here is uh, whether or not we're familiar with what uh, the graphical representation of perfect elasticity is. Let's quickly review what perfect elasticity, elasticity refers to. Perfect elasticity refers to when uh, change, no, uh, you cannot, uh, sorry, any change in price leads to 100% loss in quantity demanded. And so there's only one price level that you can take and you're basically a price taker. Uh, what that looks like on a graph is something like this. We have price, we have quantity, and our supply curve is gonna be a horizontal line. This is the only price that you're allowed to charge. You cannot increase price, you cannot decrease price. Um, those price, uh, any increase or decrease in price would mean you uh, would have to exit the market. And so um, that's going to be uh, a horizontal supply curve, and that is best matched by answer choice C. A perfectly elastic supply curve is horizontal. Let's take a look at the previous tutor's answer. Previous tutor said C, horizontal as for given change in quantity, price, change in price, quantity changes by an infinite amount. Great. Nine. Sorry, question nine says a 10% increase in the price of soda 
leads to a 20% increase in the quantity of iced tea demanded. It appears that A, elasticity of demand for iced tea is two and is elastic. B, says cross price elasticity of demand for iced tea is negative two. C, says cross price elasticity of demand for soda is negative 0.5. And D, says elasticity of demand for soda is 0.5 and it's inelastic. So right off the bat, we're looking at two different products. We're looking at a price increase for soda and a increase in quantity for iced tea. That tells us we're going to be dealing with cross price elasticity, where we're dealing with complementary or substitute goods. We can already eliminate A and D because we're not given information about a price change that is in a quantity change for a single product, right? And so A and D would not work because we don't have the information to answer those two. So it's either going to be B or C. Now looking at cross price elasticity, we can uh, say that the equation is given by percentage change in uh, quantity demanded of good A, uh, and that's our primary good, divided by percentage change in price of good B, right? And so in this case, good A is going to be iced tea, uh, or actually we, we can try both, right? So uh, cross price elasticity of demand for iced tea, which means iced tea would be A, would say that a 20% increase in quantity demanded happened, right? 20 divided by a 10% de uh, sorry, a 10% increase in the price of soda, and so. Uh, that's going to be a 10% on the bottom, so we get that the uh, the relationship would be equal to negative two, right? So, so again, elasticities are negative, and so um, that seems to be the case for our our circumstance. 10% increase in the price of sodas leads to a 20% increase in the quantity of iced tea demanded. It appears that so I actually don't think it would be negative, right? It would be positive. Um, so it looks like that's not going to match. So we can try to cross price elasticity demands for soda, but the difference is uh, because for soda we don't know what the quantity changes. We actually can't cr calculate the cross price elasticity of demand for soda. So it looks like the correct answer here has to be B. Cross price elasticity demand for iced tea is negative two, uh, and that's the the uh, only issue I take with this is that I don't believe it would be negative two because. Uh, in this circumstance, we're looking at a situation in which the price is going up and the quantity demand is going up for a different good, which means that uh, this is a substitute good, uh, not a complementary good, right? And we can look at the interpretation of cross-price elasticity, interpreting cross-price elasticity to also understand that uh, good. Right, so here we have a circumstance where uh, the cross elasticity of demand for substitute goods is always positive because the demand for one good increases when the price of the substitute increases, whereas the cross price elasticity of demand for complementary goods is negative. And so for these goods, we clearly have substitutes, and that's why we have a positive cross price elasticity. So it doesn't appear that uh, any of these are the right answer, but we can clarify that in the answer choice uh, description. So uh, again, let's take a, look, take a look at the previous year's answer. They chose B, cross price elasticity is equal to the uh, change in quantity divided by change in price. 20 divided by 10 equals two, sign is positive. So yeah, it uh, looks like the, the question itself was phrased incorrectly, but the tutor is also on the same page that the sign must be positive for this question. Let's take a look at question 10. Uh, blank is the change in what is on the horizontal axis quantity divided by the change with what is, in what is on the vertical axis or price. And so we just uh, went over this general concept that percentage change in quantity divided by percentage change in price is the general format for the elasticity equation. And so elasticity is going to be the correct answer here. Uh, elasticity is the change in what's on in change in quantity divided by change in price. And remember, it's percentage change. And so A is going to be the correct answer here. Let's take a look at the previous tutor's answer. They also chose A, elasticity, and so we can move on to question 11. Question 11 says, a severe freeze has once again damaged the Florida orange crop. The impact on the market for orange juice will be a leftward shift of A, the supply curve, and the rightward shift of the demand curve resulting in a higher equilibrium price. B, both the supply and demand curves. C, the supply curves, or D, the demand curve. As consumers try to economize because of shortage. So um, it looks like 
uh, there's a combination of answers that some suggest there's going to be a supply curve shift, some suggest there's going to be a demand curve shift, and some suggest a combination of both. When we have a severe freeze that damages the crop yield for a certain good, that's something that purely affects the producer side, the production, the supplier side, right? Whether or not there is availability of oranges does not really impact the demand by consumers for oranges. It merely impacts the availability. And so we're looking for an answer choice that talks only about a change to a supply curve. And so uh, the leftward shift is going to be uh, seen on the supply curve, and that's going to be uh, given by answer choice C. And we can take a look at the previous year's answers to make sure we're on the same page here. And the previous year also says C. Excuse me. As due to the demand, damage of orange crop, supply curve will shift leftward. 13 says, a drought decreases the supply of agricultural products, which means that at any given price, a lower quantity will be supplied. Conversely, especially good weather would shift the A, demand curve to the right, B, supply curve to the left, C, supply curve to the right, or D, demand curve to the left. And again, we're talking about determinants of supply versus determinants of demand. If we're saying that weather has a direct impact on agricultural products and poor weather leads to a decrease in quantity, then it would stand to reason that good weather would lead to an increase in quantity at every given price. An increase in quantity supplied at every given price is known as a supply curve shift to the right. Uh, again, we're not really expecting any changes to demand because this is simply on the production side, not on the consumer consumption side. And so D, sorry, C is going to be the right answer here, uh, especially good weather would shift the supply curve to the right. And we can take a look at the previous year's answer. And they also say C, supply curve to the right as at a given price, more will be supplied. So we are done with this list of questions. We're going to mark this solution as incorrect just because for four, uh, we, we disagreed with the previous year's answer. But other than that, all the other questions are right. Thank <music> you.